Hey guys, Dom Kane here for Sonic Academy. Um, today I am looking at this new gen audio master check. Uh, so, most of you will have heard of people talking about mixing and mastering and the dynamics and loudness a track can or can't have and how uh, there is a whole sort of loudness war going on or was going on until more recently and I hope most of you have heard about uh, tracks being mastered for iTunes so they're basically set at different levels they have different peak levels or average levels um, and this plugin is essentially to try and help people achieve those levels um, perhaps more importantly there are people out there who produce music or audio for broadcast for tv and that has very strict rules so using a tool like this is is essentially the law when it comes to uh, broadcast stuff um, however as a producer i find it helps me in some other ways uh, for example i'm able to really listen to how a compressor affects a track um, by that I mean most compressors when you start playing with the threshold will um, uh, will appear louder or sound louder but is that better and and, and that's where it, it becomes really tricky because most things that sound louder sound better to the human ear that doesn't necessarily always mean that it's true so if i'd be a bit more specific um for example you could be using a, a compressor and it could be uh throwing in a lot of gain reduction and it makes everything sound as though it's much louder but what you might not notice is sometimes you're losing transients in there sometimes it's squashing other sounds um, sometimes there are little artifacts in some compressors that, that might not be quite as nice and what this allows you to do is to really compare the signal that's going into the compressor and compare that to the signal that's coming out of the compressor without changing the loudness so you can actually hear what it's what the compressor is doing to your signal without listening or without taking into account the loudness of of the signal coming out um, so looking at the screen here i've got one instance of it in a master channel um, you get given some uh, factory uh, presets so you can see here's a minus 16 and with a minus 2 safety db or minus one with which is hot or minus 0 0.5 which is very hot these will will hopefully make more sense later on uh, you've also got things like tv europe tv japan because they all adhere to different rules so there are presets there so you can change exactly what you're you're monitoring at any given time and also what you want your signal to be um, over here we have a PLR which is peak loudness ratio so it compares the peak levels of your signal and to my understanding that is true peak which is again another uh, strict method of measuring signals and it compares the peak level to the average loudness and comes out with a ratio um, I've always known this as what they call dynamic range. So um, the loudest part of a track compared to the general average of a track. If you were, to, if that's a very small number, then it means generally your track really doesn't have much dynamic range. And as a producer or a mix engineer or even more mastering engineer, your goal is to achieve 
a track that sounds crisp, clean, loud, but not over compressed or squashed. So that's something that a lot of people sort of aim for with in terms of numbers and monitoring. Um, the PLR, I think most engineers will sort of aim for their track in the mix down stage at least to be anywhere between say 8 and 15 in dynamic range. Moving on to the next box, you've got LKFS. Now, you have uh, in the settings here, you can change LKFS uh, to LUFS, which is another form of measurement. And these are really sort of standardized measurements. So much like we have dB and we know dB to be dBFS, so that's full scale. Uh, decibels um, and we know for example in the digital world 0 dB is your absolute limit. Um, so the other form of measurement is LKFS or LUFS uh, which used to be different to my understanding they are now essentially the same um, especially when you're dealing with digital signals so I won't go too far into the differences there um, because that's a history lesson uh, you also have an offset to match here. Now what this does is when you start playing a track, uh, if your goal is minus 16, which you can see here, there's a little minus 16 LKFS, that's essentially the goal of this signal. Um, so if I hit offset to match, it will change the, 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 the volume of what you're listening to, to appear as though it's minus 16. Um, and we'll get into that a bit more l later. Uh, then you've got an external reference, so you can compare, so where your goal here is minus 16, you can use an external reference and compare the loudness of one track to another track. Um, but more importantly, that's where I use um, the signal chain to compare exactly what a compressor is, is doing to your track. Uh, you've then got your, your peak values here, you've got your LKFS meter up here, your PLR meter here, and then your peak meter here. And all of these are scales, you've got a reset button, an anchor button, you can change mono to stereo or mid to side signal to measure. Um, I tend to stick to the mid because the side isn't quite so important, but if you are needing that then that's there as a feature and then in the settings you can change the values of where the colors change in the meter um, and that can be really handy if you're going for perhaps uh, a bit of an odd um, a bit of an odd goal for, for for whatever reason I don't know what that reason would be but some people have them um, so yeah, so that's that's the essential basics. Um, the reason this is important for me is a lot of people really aim to uh, master for iTunes now, and 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 not only that, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and I'm sure a couple of others do um, actually implement a loudness or an auto gain control um, so they'll pick up tracks for example iTunes radio if you you could compress the hell out of a track or completely not compress a track and if you sent them to iTunes radio or broadcast them through iTunes radio um, they'll essentially come out at the same levels the same average levels so it almost makes over mastering irrelevant these days and the whole loudness war which is why I said at the beginning of this video the loudness war until recently was a big deal it's not so much of a big deal now because people aren't trying to compete in how loud you can make your record because the actual at the end of the day at the end broadcast method um, particularly when it comes to YouTube Spotify um, and Apple radio they all tend to aim for around minus 14 to minus 16 LUDB or LKFS. Um, 
which so that's that's a good goal to aim for so if you can get your track sounding really big and tight and everything sounding as you want it and you're hitting minus 16 lkfs in your meter then you know you've nailed it basically um so yeah i think that gives you a rough idea of what this is for um i'll be showing you how i use that in a track and how other people might want to use that in a track um and yeah and hopefully you'll see that actually it's it's not just good for mixing and mastering but it's also good for um testing almost putting putting compressors to the test and and um anything that affects the loudness of a track uh, will generally sound more pleasing to the human ear because it's louder um, but if you were to take that loudness away from for example a compressor you're left with just the artifacts of what that compressor leaves behind so for me it's a it, it's it's a pretty clever tool um, and it's certainly one i use when i'm doing my mixing and especially mastering um, so i'll see you in the next video and i'll run through some examples cheers thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our sonic academy youtube channel so if you find this video super useful please we'd love you to hit the subscribe button we update the uh, youtube channel every week with new content and if you want to watch some more relevant content just click on the videos beside me